Hey math friends, I'm Brittany Heggie, the math obsessed educator behind Mix and Math. And in today's video, we are gonna talk about all things test prep. So I wish I could tell you that I was the teacher who was cool as a cucumber the weeks leading up to testing, but that would be a lie. In all honesty, I was a nervous wreck. It's not that I didn't trust that all of the work that I had done all year would pay off. I just am such a perfectionist. And so because of that, I wanted to make sure that everything was perfect leading up to the test. And because of that, I actually made a lot of mistakes along the way, which I ended up kind of correcting in the years following. But in today's video, I wanted to share with you the top four mistakes that I made when it came to test prep and the adjustments that I made to make test prep a much better season for me and my students. And I want you to stick around because at the very end, I actually have my top tip for any math teacher who is heading into testing season with their students. So let's dive in. So my very first mistake that I made really early in my teaching career was that I spent way too long on test prep. I blocked off an entire month and said, okay, we are just gonna have to learn all the content that we can. And then for four weeks, we are going to review for the test. And let me tell you, that was actually very disruptive to our classroom routine. So that meant for three or four weeks, we were completely out of the routine that we had established for the entire year. And because of that, students weren't feeling their best heading into the test. I didn't feel like our engagement and students' attention was where I really wanted it to be leading into test day. And I really think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we weren't in routine. So. What did I do to correct that? Well, I in following years, I started to just kind of weave test review or test prep into our everyday learning. And then gradually, as we got closer to the week or week and a half leading up to the test, that is when we really kind of went into test prep mode. But that doesn't mean that we weren't doing any type of test prep for the weeks before that. We just weren't completely disrupting our routine and then canceling everything and saying, okay, now we're in testing season. So obviously every district and every state is different for when they take their end of grade tests. But for us, it was usually right near the end of the school year, like with a couple weeks left after the test. And so starting around the beginning of quarter four, I would really start start to ramp up on the review that we were doing. And so I would incorporate it into the warm up, or I would have just a quick portion of our lesson at the very end of the class period be some type of test prep review, but it wasn't anything really disruptive. It was just kind of just replacing a normal part of our routine with that review. And so I would continue to do that for week after week after week. And then the closer we got, those portions of the lesson might get a little bit longer because we're getting closer to that testing time and I wanted to spend a little bit more time on that review. So I gradually phased out of our typical lesson and then phased into review, but that was really only a week and a half or two weeks before the test instead of the original four weeks where I felt like we were just completely out of routine. That made a huge difference in just how I felt leading into testing season and how students felt as well. The second mistake that I made as I was planning for test prep was I tried to review everything equally. So I would look at all of the standards for our grade level and I would plan out, okay, we're gonna review these standards this day and these standards this day and these standards this day, not even recognizing that really some of these concepts are much more important for us to review than others. So a big shift that I made in following years was prioritizing the core concepts for that grade level, or really the concepts that were the most important for students to master in that grade. And so your district may have a document that kind of lets you know, or your state may have a document that kind of lets you know what concepts are really weighted heavily on the test, and not even just the test, which concepts truly are the core concepts that students need to master. And then we also have supplemental resources or supplemental concepts as well. And so I'll actually link a document in the description that if you are a Common Core state or a state that has uh, standards that are modified from Common Core, this document will actually be really helpful for you because it will allow you to focus on those priority standards. So the way I began approaching testing season is I would look at the core concepts for the grade level and make sure that the time that I was spending reviewing was predominantly spent on those core concepts. Now, that doesn't mean we didn't review other things, 
but I wasn't reviewing everything equally. I was being very intentional with our review time. One, because I'd obviously cut our review time down, Obviously we were kind of gradually doing it before, but I really just made sure we were reviewing the things that students were gonna see the most on the test. Now that may seem like I'm playing the testing game, but ultimately if students are going to have 20 questions about fractions on a test, I want them to feel really confident in that concept. It wouldn't make sense for me to spend an equal amount of time on fractions as I am geometry, because we know geometry is not a priority standard in our state, it's not a priority standard for fifth grade. The third mistake I made when it came to test prep is I really spent a whole lot of extra time on the concepts that students hadn't mastered, the concepts that I felt like students were struggling with the most. Now, you may be wondering, why is that a mistake? Focusing on those concepts is not a bad thing, but I was spending so much time during our review time on concepts that students weren't confident in. And so I made some shifts that I think really changed the energy and the mindset of my students heading into the test. As I mentioned, I spent a lot of time on concepts that students didn't know. And so the concepts that I felt like students had mastered, I was like, oh, we don't need to review that. But I want you to consider what that does for students mentally when we're spending so much time on things leading up to the test that they aren't confident in. And so the shift that I made is I started bringing in things or bringing in concepts and reviewing concepts that students were had either mastered or were close to mastery because I wanted them to feel good about what they'd learned. I wanted them to feel good about what they were gonna see on the test. And so, yes, it's important to review those things that students still haven't mastered, but I really made sure that I was also incorporating things that students felt really good about as well. The last mistake I made, and I don't know if this is really the last mistake I made, but it's the last one that I'm addressing today. The fourth mistake that I made is that I spent more time focusing on students' academic needs and not enough time focusing on their mental and emotional needs. So in fourth and fifth grade, students are very aware of test scores and you know whether that qualifies them for gifted services or whether that gets them into a certain class in middle school. And depending on the group of students that you're working with, they may have pressure from their parents. And so there are a lot of emotions and mental battles that students in upper elementary have when it comes to testing. And I was completely unaware of that. And maybe I was slightly aware of it, but I thought it was more important for me to focus on their academic needs. And so we spent all this time focusing on test strategies and all the concepts we hadn't gotten to and just anything related to math. But I wasn't really talking to them about their mindset going into the test and what the purpose of the test was and really just trying to build up their confidence and their motivation. So a big change that I made that made such a difference, and I can't even take credit for this. We actually had a counselor at our school who came in and talked to my students that first year and said, all right, let's go. Like, this is an opportunity for you to show off, for you to show what you know. And I was like, oh my goodness, that is such a different mindset than what students are probably used to hearing or even than what I had been communicating to them. And so for every year after that, I really tried to encourage students that the test was an opportunity for them to show off, for them to show how much they've grown, for them to show how many math challenges they've overcome. It was a time for them to show how amazing they are at math, how amazing they are as mathematicians, and not to test into a certain class or have one of the highest test scores in the school. That shift alone made such a huge difference in how my students came into the test on test day, but also how I felt going into test day as well. So there you go. I shared with you my four mistakes that I made during test prep season early in my teaching career and what changes I made that really led my students to a place of success. But now I want to leave you with this. If you get nothing else from this video, I hope you hear this. Choose confidence over cramming. With everything in me, I believe students will perform so much better on the test when they are confident in what they know, rather than going into the test lacking confidence because we spent way too much time cramming things they weren't even close to mastering yet before the test. And so they go in with a just really low sense of belief in themselves as math learners. I think there is this false sense of comfort in feeling like we've covered all of the standards before test day. And I really believe that if you have covered the priority standards, your students are 
mastering or close to mastering those priority standards that your test scores will actually come back better than just kind of halfway getting through every single standard before the test. I would rather my students absolutely nail the content they know than to kind of be iffy on everything because we didn't really go deep throughout the year on any concept just to make sure that all the standards were covered before the test. Now, obviously that has some like forward planning and you know, we can get into all of that later about how I set up my scope and sequence so that we can make sure that we've covered all the priority standards in depth before the test. But when we're talking about test prep season, if there are a couple standards that you haven't taught, my belief, and you can disagree, absolutely, is that your time will be better spent focusing on reviewing those concepts that students are maybe just so close to mastering than bringing in a whole nother standard and rushing through it just so that it is taught before the day of the test. I think that cramming can actually cause students to lose confidence, and we know we want our students feeling confident, motivated, encouraged going into the test. I know it may seem counterintuitive. We are used to cramming. In college, I was constantly cramming before a test, but we have to remember we're working with fourth and fifth grade students, and their mindset and their confidence going into tests, we cannot diminish how important that is. So choose confidence over cramming this testing season. I hope this video was helpful. I hope that if you are making some of the mistakes that I made, first off, don't feel bad about that. I made the mistakes as well, but I hope kind of the changes and shifts that I made that really impacted my students. I hope that's something you can try out and you'll have to let me know how it goes. While I'd love to end this video with telling you your test scores don't define you and to give yourself grace, this has been a tough year. Trust yourself as a math teacher. I know that that will really only resonate with some of you because I was the teacher who no matter how many times I had people telling me that, I still stressed during test season. So. For that teacher, I will tell you, I've been there. I'm right there with you. I am rooting for all of you, regardless of how you feel during this testing season. And I hope that you and your students take time to reflect on how many things you overcame and how many things you accomplished this year. So there you have it. There is a little peek inside the mistakes I've made, the changes I made, and a little pep talk that I hope will just serve you so well this testing season. I would absolutely love it if before you left, you went ahead and gave this video a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss next week's video, and I would love nothing more than to get to connect with you in the comments. So leave a comment, and I cannot wait to talk math with you again soon.